Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And do you know what time it is? Timo time? It's Timo time, hey. episode number 28. Good 28. Yeah, not bad. Thanks. <laughs> Any uh, other 28s you could think of? Sean Burr, Ooh. for some reason, sticks in my head, and unfortunately he passed away a couple years ago. Uh, another one is Nils Ekman. Remember that name? That's a good one. That's yeah. uh, one of the uh, throwbacks with Jumbo when he first got on the team. Absolutely. Very yeah. nice, very nice. Okay, so uh, we've got a nice show for you today. Obviously, we're going to be doing the uh, Week in Review. We came off a very big win today in Chicago, which yep. is awesome. And then we're also going to be talking about the Sharks. Putting it together, it seems like now, uh, we're getting a much more complete effort, it seems like. so. Yeah, we'll yeah, look at uh, Dylan a little bit more, mm -hmm. a little bit more specifically. And uh, Chekovic. <laughs> Chekovic. <laughs> yeah. He's tearing up the queue right now, so uh, we're going to... Give him a little shout out too. Yep. So. And we'll look ahead of the week. Uh, yeah. The game's coming up this week. Very good. Okay, you ready to start the show? Ready. Woo! Woo! No. Woo! No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Say no to the woo. I, I, I had to. <laughs> Go no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, uh, we can review. We had a game in New Jersey earlier in the week. It was mm -hmm. a 5-2 win. A pretty complete effort, I would say. The Sharks mm -hmm. looked really good. And Shimmick getting his first goal. Yeah. So that was nice. Yeah, it was a great goal. Nice mm -hmm. uh, nice rip from the point. Oh, yeah. Went straight through, like, uh, seeing eyes on the puck. Is it yeah, true? yeah. Well, it's nice when you got guys standing in front of the net and they're kind of uh, blocking the goalie's view and that mm -hmm. puck just sails right in, you know. it's And they, the celebration for him was really nice. Everybody jumping on him and everything, yeah. you know. What you would expect to see, obviously for a guy getting his first goal so that was very nice yeah and I think that helps solidify his uh, place in the lineup Too. and uh, you know poor uh, Joachim Ryan on the sideline but <laughs> uh, they're going to play with the hot hand whoever's going to play with Burns and play well and yep. right now it's Shimmick and I mean I think we talked about this a uh, little bit with Kevin like don't get too excited about right. it because it's still pretty early mm -hmm. and if you remember Joachim Ryan was playing very well like this and when he first started so yeah. um you know, don't get too ahead of yourselves thinking that Shimek is the answer and he's yeah. going to be playing the rest of the season. Who yeah. knows? Who knows what will happen? Yeah, we don't want to get too high on the highs, too low on the lows. And, you know, we were talking about, you know, earlier before the season started, said, okay, you know, things are, are going to be um, a little rough maybe to start off. Mm. 15, 20 games is what we were talking about, maybe getting into it. You know, Shimek, uh, on a per-player basis, Shimek's only played, what, seven, eight games yeah. or something to that effect. Um, so, you know, we're, we're still waiting to see, you know, more than just that few uh, little small sample size that he's given us so far. But what he's shown so far has been really good. Um, defensively, at least, we've seen a lot. And, of course, he's putting up a, he's a couple yeah. assists now, too. Right. But he brings the physicality, yeah. which, which I think uh, the Sharks lack a little bit mm -hmm. on the defensive side. Um, but he, he's fitting in well, and he's looking great, and he's making Burns look even better because <laughs> uh, he's able to make up for Burns' mistakes when yeah. he's on defense. It's like a five foot 11, 200 pound butterball out there, I yeah. think, is really what it comes <laughs> down good. to. But butterball. Timo had a heck of a game, too. As well. Yes, yeah. Timo time all the time. <laughs> he is on fire right now, uh, scoring some really nice, yeah. re nice looking goals. Uh, definitely goal score goals. So mm -hmm. uh, it's great to see from the guy who was only drafted a few years ago. So yeah. Um, it, he's, it's coming together and exactly what the Sharks needed at the right time. I tweeted out a concern of mine about Timo Meyer actually uh, during the game. I said I was concerned he was a minion of Dr. Evil because <laughs> he's a shark with a freaking laser beam. <laughs> the guy shoots. Uh, it's a, it's amazing yeah. how hard he shoots. And it's just wristers too. The other guy, yeah. and, I'll, and I'll, we'll go back to Timo in a second here, is uh, Evander Kane. Mm -hmm. I've seen him at practices and I tweeted this out too. When he wrist shots and, and it misses the net, it goes a little wide. Oh man, it, I mean, it sounds like a slap shot's hitting the boards. I mean, this thing is is ridiculously hard. You cannot give that man time and space. Yeah, he will make you pay for it. Yeah, yeah, so. and he's he's been heating up too recently. Oh yeah, and we were talking. About, I think last week's episode, mm -hmm. we we're talking about how uh, he should be getting some bearing some more goals, and yeah. he's starting to get his starting to. He's not. It's not that he's getting more chances. He's getting the same amount of chances, but he's putting them away now. Yeah. So he's and he's kind of a streaky player. Yeah. Um, so we'll see the ups and downs of Kane, uh, kind of like Patrick Marlowe when Patrick Marlowe goes on the team. Sure. Yeah. He goes in spurts and um, just won't be consistently scoring in, on an 82 goal pace yeah. like he was in the beginning of the season. Yeah. Well, uh, a guy who's on a pretty good pace right now too, uh, Joe Pavelski got his 20th in that mm -hmm. game as well. Um, my goodness, he's on what was on pace for 51 goals or whatever. I mean, he might hit it, but I even think if he cools off, he's 30, still on pace for 30. Yeah, 30's in the bag. Yeah. 40 might be within reason. Right. Uh, 50, I think, is just a bit yeah. too much. That, that's reaching. I mean, he'd have to stay on this pace exactly for the rest of the season. I don't yeah. think that's going to happen. I'd be happy if I it mean, did, but I'm not complaining if yeah. it did. <laughs> that, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's great for him, especially going into a contract year. Sure. So. Um, 
34 year old doing a lot of good things. So yeah. That's great. It's great to see. Very nice. So uh, then we went to Dallas, or no, we we Dallas came to us. Yes, I guess. Yeah. So that was the redemption tour we were talking about, right? Because right. last time we played Dallas, they beat us up, and uh, we weren't having that. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, invited them into our barn to give them a little bit of a whooping too. Yeah, so. it was a tight game. Yeah, um, I was actually there. Uh, nice. Me and our producer were there, along with our other cousin. Did you so. bring your pillow for the first period? I oh, gosh, it was <laughs> so. Sl- I remember, it wasn't slow. It was fast. I, yeah. I looked up and I go, "Wow, the first period is already done," and there was maybe one or two scoring chances <laughs> at the most. It was so boring. Yeah, there was just a lot of, um, a lot of, I guess hockey. I guess you, <laughs> I guess you call it just systematic play. Yeah. Chess chess yeah. yeah yeah just battling for position it was and nine total shots on goal yeah. in the first period it was so so bad yeah. so um we hit the bar and we, like, <laughs> we need to we need to forget about that period uh the second period was better yes. third period is was the best yeah and uh it was a tight game it came down to the wire it was three to two so mm-hmm. um the sharks were on the better end of the three to two this time around yeah. so it's good to see them close out and get two full points and not going to overtime and give Dallas any uh, leadway in there. Yeah. And there's, uh, well, I guess they're in the other division now, but uh, still for the wild card, you never know. So yeah. it's good. Good for the Sharks. Well, it was the uh, the goal, actually what, what kick-started the Sharks was the goal that Dallas put up. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden we woke up and, oh, we're playing hockey. Forgot. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, all of a sudden we start putting them in. That's uh, true. Pete DeBoer shuffles up the lines a little bit. Got a good day, mm-hmm. uh, a good not reaction, but I guess a result, a good result out of, mm-hmm. out of uh, shuffling him up again. He sometimes gets a little bit of criticism for putting um, everybody in the line blender, but yeah. it, it uh, seemed to work out this time around, which was nice. Yeah. I, I When they scored the goal, I was, like, I was thinking in my head, oh, no, here we go. <laughs> it's going to be one of those games where the Sharks are just not awake, and yeah. then they give up a terrible goal, and then they're going to fight and finally wake up and then not be able it'll to be come late. back. Yeah, it'll be too late. Yeah. But it wasn't. So yeah, things no, are turning good. around. Things are changing this season. <laughs> so uh, Timo, in in repeat fashion, gets another two goals that game mm-hmm. as well. So again, shark with freaking laser beams. Yeah, guys, just putting them up. They're Can't pretty goals too. Yeah. Both of them are pretty goals. Absolutely. NHL was it NHL ninety six where you <laughs> toe drag on Sega Genesis, yeah. make the goalie go down, and then roof it. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're both very patient goals, and that yeah. was one of the things that we we've seen from him. I think uh, Bakes might have been talking about it earlier, where he said, you know. In your rookie season, this would have been Timo crashing the net, going straight to the net. Now he's kind of got a little bit more patience, and he's looking for it, and he's got more minutes to work with, I think is mm-hmm. what they had said, and that was after today's game. But he's got more minutes to work with. When, when he was a rookie, he only had you know a handful of minutes a night. Now mm-hmm. he's got more time to work with, and he's not just trying to crash bang the net to try to score every single time. He's able to take his time and pick his shots now. Yeah, and those shots are great. Yeah. I mean, it's good that he doesn't have to crash the net every time to get a goal uh, <laughs> that's going to save his body yeah. in the long run for the very long season and into the playoffs. Um, but when playoffs come around, I bet you he's going to be going back to that style of yeah. just crash bang into the into the, into the goal and, and get those goals. And if I had one complaint about the Dallas game, it would be that Joe Thornton scored the game-winning goal <laughs> and he was not one of the four stars. Yeah, that's that's my biggest gripe. Like, you, if you if Joe Thornton scores the game winning goal and he doesn't make the top three stars, you need to have a fourth star. <laughs> like that's I'm, I'm not, sure he was star. The three honorable half, mention, the yeah, three and a half star. That's not good enough. Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, I'm lobbying for you, Joe. <laughs> so, I don't know, dude. Uh, Chicago today. We went to Chicago and uh, they've been struggling a bit. Uh, mm-hmm. Frustration is starting to show, especially with their mascot. Uh, beat, beating up the fans now. Uh, no, actually, the fan attacked the mascot, it seems right. like. What's his name again? I forget now. Uh, I don't know. Who cares? Anyway, um, so he he uh, it got into a bit of a fight. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. He got into a bit of a, a scuffle there. Uh, fan maybe tried to take his, his head off, yeah. literally. Yeah, I think and, that's uh, what happened. It was yeah. a fan that was a little inebriated <laughs> trying to start something for who knows whatever yeah. reason. And uh, I watched the fight. I think it was on Deadspin or something. And um, the... Whatever this mascot name is, Tommy Hawk. Tommy Hawk. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he handled it pretty well. I thought. I thought uh, he wasn't being violent. He was yeah. just basically subdued the guy and tackled him to the ground and, and sat on top of him yeah. until someone could come and help. So there were a couple punches and his head <laughs> stayed on. He yeah. did a very admirable job. Okay. Admirable job. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's a good video. You should check that out. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if we can link that anywhere. Maybe yeah, we'll link maybe, it, but maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, the, so Back to in the, the game, and sharks, yeah. yeah, in the game, sorry, um, yeah, the defense was kind of fell asleep a little bit in the beginning there. I know Martin Jones let one in uh, a softy in, and yeah. he did that in a previous game as well in the New, the Jersey, New Jersey game. game. Yeah, um, 
But, I, I mean, I feel like not all those goals are, again, pinned on Jones. I see, like, the defense kind of standing around a little bit and puck watching and just kind of being lethargic, not really paying attention to where the guys are sneaking in around them, and you know, that kind of bit us. And, you know, for better or worse, Jones gets pulled, and, and well, obviously for better because, you know, we end up winning Del the game. Well. But, yeah, Dell had one of those nights where but he stepped in and he was a lot, steady. A lot of those times, at, when he got pulled, he had... One save on four shots. Mm -hmm. Now, he, one of those goals was a soft goal. Yeah. The second goal was a double deflection. I mean, who's going to be able to stop that? That That's insane. And then the third one, I can't even remember, but it wasn't... I think it was the, the breakaway, breakaway. The breakaway goal where they, he yeah. made the first save and the rebound got put in. Yeah. And I think had he saved both or whatever, it would have been a penalty shot anyway. Right. Because it was a clear breakaway and Braun got burned and took him down. So, um, but see right there what you just said. Right. That to me is the problem. The problem isn't the guy in the pads. It's I agree. The guy's but in front of him. DeBoer right? pulled him, and it's not necessarily he's pulling him because he's playing terrible. Right. It's a kickstart to the team, and also like a, a message to the rest of the team saying, "Hey, you guys are letting this guy down, and he got pulled because of it." Right. And we're putting Dell in, so you better you know get your stuff together, yeah. which they did. Yeah. So they came back and tied up the game mm -hmm. while they were down. They were down one nothing, or they were down. They were down two nothing because they went two two zero oh, right off the oh, right, right. right away. They went down two goals none, and yep. then Sharks came back to so end up two two. It was two nothing. Then it was three to two. Yeah. Then it then all sharks. came in. Yeah, and then, then it was, it was all, sharks. all sharks. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Sharks responded well on the road to a struggling team, but the Blackhawks still have a lot of those good players. Oh, yeah. They still have Kane, Taves, uh, Keith, uh, Seabrook, and Crawford, and unfortunately. Crawford got nailed uh, in yeah. goal, and he, the, he slammed the back of his head into the back of the post, uh, got concussed, and had to leave the game. So Cam Ward came in, yeah. um, and Cam Ward is a is a decent backup. I mean, he has a very good pedigree uh, playing in Carolina for so long, won a cup with Carolina. Yeah. Uh, so he's a very good goalie to mm -hmm. be as a backup. Um, unfortunately, he didn't play that well. <laughs> I mean, he actually he didn't play terrible. I it's think a it, tough thing coming in cold. Coming right? in cold, but his defense led him out to yeah. dry. At least, I mean, we saw that last goal. You yeah. can see the frustration that he had too. Yeah, just yeah. flicking the puck out of the goal after his. It sport. wasn't even flicking. I mean, he was full on just blasting yeah. that puck. I mean, as hard as a goaltender can shoot it, at least he he ripped it at the the sideboards there. Yeah. I mean, it was one of those things where the, the puck's getting passed around, and he makes a save, makes another save, and then it gets right in the slot, and no one's covering the slot, and bang, it gets to, you know punched in. I mean, I'd be upset, too, if I was Cam Ward. Now, the nice thing is, yeah, Cam Ward is a very serviceable backup for, for the Carolina Hurricanes. Didn't play that well at, at that point in the game. It's a nice problem to have for us as well where we have a really good uh, backup in Dell, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what he is. He's a backup, and we've had this conversation many times. When Martin Jones is having an off night or when Martin Jones needs a break, right. we can rely on Dell to come in, take those minutes, and play well. Mm -hmm. Right? It's the long stretch where if you were to ask him to play 50, 60 games – that's where we would see maybe not such a great idea, but he's right. able to jump in and step in when we really need him to. Right. And going back to, um, I think it was the Sharks' sixth goal. It was the score was <laughs> five to three at this time. At this point, uh, the Sharks had a power play, and it was Hurdle was passing it on the blue line across to Burns, and we I, we've noticed this a lot. A lot of teams are pressuring high because the Sharks are usually playing one of Burns or Carlson up high on the on the point, and then they have four forwards. And so you don't have that second defenseman in there. Um, they're pressuring high, trying to get those high turnovers and, and getting breakaways and chances. So I don't know who it was. I don't know which Blackhawk player it was, but he went um, hurdle, sauced it over yeah. to Burns, and had he not sauced it, if it was a pass on right. the ice, that puck is gone. They are going to pick that off, and it was a breakaway. Clear breakaway. Nobody was going to be near him. And that would have made it 5-4 with five minutes left in the game. Right. Instead, it gets over to Burns, who passes it to LeBanc, who just buries it over Croft, or, uh, not Crawford, Ward's Ward. glove hand. With one eye. He did it with one eye. Oh, right. Right? Yeah. Uh, the guy, uh, I forget who it was, but the, the high stick uh, mm -hmm. came up, smashed him hard. And they did a post game, and this guy's oh, face is Oh, there's a picture. We'll post it up on here. It's torn. Pretty, yeah. yeah. It looked pretty bad. Yeah. Pretty nasty. But that's hockey, right? I mean, that's right. that's I mean, hockey players rather. These are the guys that they go out there and not only do they get half their face cut off. Yeah. Uh, they go and finish the game and they score a goal. You yeah. Know, why not? And then they go do a post game interview. Yeah. Like sweet. Like nothing <laughs> happened. Right. Like like this whole part of your face is probably numb <laughs> and all the adrenaline's going, so you don't feel it. 
then you yeah. take a shower and you go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so not just uh, the big names uh, putting pucks in the net. I mean, Kane did get one tonight as mm-hmm. well. Uh, but the fourth line jumping in, playing a really good game as well. Uh, Radil had a really close shot and missed it. Yeah. Barely. I think he hit the post. Yeah. Melka yeah. Carlson had a really nice goal. Yeah. And who was the other two. one on the fourth? Lady Goodrow. Two. Goodrow. Oh, Goodrow. Sorry. It. Yeah. Yep. So Carlson's was really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, that made it two to one, I believe. It yeah. Lead in half. Um, and then Goodrow's was towards the end too. But uh, yeah, great. It's great to see the fourth line producing, which is what DeBoer says needs yeah. to happen because you can't have the big guns playing every single night and mm-hmm. scoring for your team. So seven goals is pretty good. You know, not bad. <laughs> These games aren't going to be like that all the time. Right. But the Sharks have the star power um, throughout all four lines. When all four lines are rolling, this is what happens. Yeah. And this is, I think. This is what we've been alluding to over the past, this whole season of mm-hmm. our of our show. Um, the Sharks are going to gel. I think four lines, they have four lines. Fourth line center, they're still, they're kind of working it out. Who knows? I, don't know. I, I think Goodrow might have that on lock now. I he's, don't know. He's looking I, pretty good. For now. Yeah. For now. I think they're still going to go after somebody and get that That's fourth fair. line center. Um, more for depth reasons, because if someone gets hurt, yeah. who they have, right? Right. So I think more for depth reasons they're going to be going and that's going to help them go for a deeper run in the playoffs sure um or leading into the playoffs and the playoffs so i, I bet that's coming soon because the tread line deadline is coming up uh i think it's uh, in february hmm. so not that far away yeah um but yeah th- we're seeing four lines rolling and, and seeing a lot of goals out of it yeah and that's one of the things we we're talking about was was 60 minutes we you know we want to see the sharks playing for 60 full minutes right well it's it's hard to do that it's hard to get everybody on board to play for 60 full minutes every single game you're going to burn out right um and there are times where you're going to have you know your top line not playing at its best at its peak all the time and you're going to need those death players to step in mm-hmm. and really contribute and that's what we're seeing right now at least in this game is what we saw and hopefully for the deeper run that becomes something that's just normal for the team that when the top guys aren't able to get it done that the the low utilization guys are able to step right. in and help out right well we saw that at the end of last season with eric fair coming in yes. and that line was on fire mm-hmm. which is odd to say that your fourth line is on fire right but that that helped them uh solidify their playoff spot and then going into the first round against anaheim yeah. they also were basically mismatching with other teams and and burying their chances right which is what we want to see is mm-hmm. the mismatch because not a lot of teams can roll four okay maybe three really good scoring lines and then that fourth line that's right a good third line on another team right yeah so giving them minutes more than 10 minutes a game sure and you're comfortable with that well and another thing that we saw was um the second period we've not been very good in second periods mm-hmm. uh, up until recent at least in this game and i think uh, over the last couple of them the second period hasn't been bad at least in, in the chicago game they scored three goals yeah now again it gets a struggling chicago team but like you said they're still a very very solid team in terms of the guys that they still have from that cup run that they they went on mm-hmm. and uh it's nice to see that we're kind of bucking that trend of not being able to put the points up in the second period. Now, it's unfortunate that we couldn't keep the trend of scoring first in the first period and hmm. scoring many in the first period, but I'll take a win any way you can get it. Right. And we alluded to this last week in our in our looking ahead for this mm-hmm. week that there were three games that the Sharks were playing, and they're very winnable games. Dallas, I thought, was going to be the hardest game, and it, I think it was. It was mm-hmm. a closer game. New Jersey took them a while to wake up, and then once they did, they they buried them and took care of them. Yeah. Um, and Chicago, because they're struggling, I thought was going to be an easy win. Not super easy, but right. a, a must win kind of in a way where mm-hmm. it, they're not going to lose to a team that is struggling right. and, and on the downward trend instead of the upward trend. Right. So three, that's what, in, uh, gosh, I could do math. Six possible <laughs> points. Six, 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 out six out of six points on the week, yeah. and that's fantastic. And now the Sharks are right back up in the top. Not the top of the division, but they're right behind Calgary and yeah. ahead of Anaheim and ahead of Vegas. So, so keeping pace. Another um, a milestone beginning with the number six, Brent Burns getting three assists tonight. Gets mm-hmm. his 600th NHL point. Congratulations to Brent Burns. Job, Burnsy. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's in the bag. <laughs> Put him in the bag. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. So, uh, yeah, I think what we're seeing now is, uh, and we kind of just touched on a little bit, but this putting it all together now, right? Players can get hot. Players can get cold. The team seems like it's kind of gelling uh, right now. And this is the the right time to gel, right? Mm-hmm. As we're getting into this uh, st- stage of the season where, you know, we're trying to figure out if we're going to be making a trade for somebody or not. 
if we can identify our team now and what are we, right? Uh, are, are we a cup contender? Do we need a, a piece here and there? Or are we solid up and down the lineups? The the more more we see that we're capable of moving forward without having to make a trade mm-hmm. or that we are just solid as a team, we don't have to like, you know, flip partners here and there for defense or whatever the case may be, the better we're going to be going forward in terms of, uh, you know, understanding our identity and, and making a good push, I think. Yeah, I think um, our defensive pairings look pretty set with respect to right. Shimek, which we talked about earlier. Um, I think uh, everything's looking good. Everyone's getting more comfortable with each other. I mean, we keep talking about Carlson and, and people getting used to him as right. well as him getting used to the team. I think we're past that point now. We're getting pretty close to being really past that point. And yeah. just Carlson's finally a shark and a member of the team. And, you know, he's he's there. Like, he's going to be what he's doing. So um, I think it's less about that storyline and more about the whole team coming together. And we've talked about this in a couple episodes ago about the team defense. And I think they're starting to play better team defense. Yeah. It's not perfect. It's not quite there yet, but it's definitely better than it was a month ago. Um, I mean, putting together three straight wins, yeah. and they haven't had very many three-win streaks this season. Um, keep continuing that and, and moving forward and, and getting those points up on the board because you need as many points. In this division, yeah. as weak as the Pacific Division <laughs> is, you still need to get those points in the bank. So yeah. um, the Sharks are finally doing that. And Again, we talked about this, I think, last week, how... Uh, a three-game win streak <laughs> is going to change everyone's tone because yeah. if you remember last week, everyone was very sour on the Sharks and how they're doom and gloom and not going to make playoffs and they should <laughs> blow up the team. Now here we are. Yeah. Looking like we're in the driver's seat of the division again. Calgary so. is looking really good. Um, Calgary is very good. Yeah. I, this going back to our pretender episode it, of, exactly. of the people. Yeah, I was just uh, say. At that <laughs> point, Calgary, Vancouver, and who's the other one? Anaheim, I think, I think was so. up top. Um, I said Vancouver's a pretender. They're going to drop, which they did. I mean, they went on like a 10-game yeah. losing streak or something exactly. really bad. Um, Anaheim, I still think, is a little weak, and I think it's because of their depth is not quite there. Um, and Gibson really drives that team, and he always gets a few injuries every year. He's going to get hurt again at some point, um, and they're going to tank again, I think, yeah. between now and the end, end of the season. Um L.A. I didn't think was going to make playoffs. So I thought they would have been better than they are. Sure. Um, I, that's a little bit of a surprise to me, but not completely surprised. I thought they would have been on the bubble, like try, coming down to the wire the, at the end of the season. Right. Um, Vegas, I also thought was going to regress, but still be kind of like L.A. in that bubble playoff team. Sure. But they're surging now, and they're starting to come up a little bit higher yeah. than I wish they would. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and we're starting to see, you know, we said, I think it was episode 25 where we said, you know, we're, I'm expecting to see a better defensive effort Mm -hmm. from the team. Again, not the defensemen, but the team's defense, right? And I felt that with that better defensive effort, we're going to see the goalie stats jump up a little bit. And I'll put these uh, stats on the screen. This is me just going to NHL.com and, um, you know, picking things here and there Mm -hmm. of of, of what I wanted to show. But um, basically what it shows is that the, the goaltender's, for both Arendelle and Martin Jones, over a certain stretch of like the the bad stretch that we had, where we were losing a bunch of games in a row, right? Um, it shows their numbers. Their numbers are you know pretty bad. You know we're talking pretty like sub too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that kind of speaks to is not so much the goalie. It's it's the guy in front of the goalie, right? That's mm-hmm. that's making or breaking those numbers. Um, yes, the goaltender has a lot to say about those numbers, but if you're constantly dealing with breakaways and odd man rushes it's really difficult to, to put up a good save percentage, mm-hmm. right? And I think it, over those those games, it shows that those those save percentages are pretty bad. The goals against average are pretty bad. Um, I think there was one win that we had where I think Aaron Dell had like an 85% save percentage, but he only faced a handful of shots, and they happened to pull that game out, right? Mm-hmm. So in any case, there's another stretch that shows the games that they won, uh, as of recent at least, and save percentages are much higher. That <laughs> one, go figure, right? Um, and in those games, the team defense, they, they played much better. Now, tonight even, they had a couple weird, you know, odd man breaks, and that's where you see Martin Jones getting pulled. We had these awful kind of defensive, sh- like, moments. Breakdowns. Basically. Yeah, exactly. And then we even even with Dell in the net, we had some bad ones, but Dell just happened to make the save. Hey, good on him, you know. Mm-hmm. I feel like Martin Jones is one of those goalies that he needs a handful of shots in the beginning of the game to really warm up to it. Um, if you give him a really good scoring opportunity as, like, the first shot on goal, it's probably going in. But if I he, think a lot of goalies are like that, not sure. just Martin Jones. And and I'm not, 
I'm not like being such a defender of Martin <laughs> Jones, but I think a lot of goalies, um, we see the Sharks do this a lot where they're peppering goalies with 40 plus shots yeah. and they seem like they're saving everything because they're warmed up at that point where Jones, you get a lot of shots blocked. So yeah. I feel like the, the higher grade scoring chances are the ones that are coming through and the lower grade ones that the Sharks tend to get through on other goalies, make those goalies look better, get them more involved in the game, get them warmed up more right. than what Jones is doing. But yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. But, yeah, so, I mean, I, I just feel like, you know, as as the team has played better defensively around, uh, I mean, up and down the ice, we've played better all the way around, but specifically defensively mm-hmm. um, in front of our goaltenders, obviously those numbers are going to improve. And it's 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 a product of those players, not so much a product of the guy that you put in the crease. Right. right. That's just kind of how I feel about it. But another thing on stats here is uh, a guy who's kind of gone under the radar, I think, and, and there's so many good players on our blue line. <laughs> um, and obviously the new guy, Shimmick, right? He's taken a lot of the spotlight too. Um, Brendan Dillon. Uh, he, dilly Dilly. Dilly Dilly. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually he's playing really well, and I'm looking at the stats. I just was pulling up stats today, just taking a look. And when I was looking at the... Um, shot attempts percentages yep. mm-hmm. and the unblocked shot attempt percentages. Now, again, a lot of this has to do with his partner, but we see Brendan Dillon at, at least in the top half on every single one of these um, these different bits of, of, of stats here, mm-hmm. but a couple of them are he's at the very top or maybe he's right underneath Eric Carlson in terms of the shot percentages. Right. I mean, this is a guy, I mean, again, he's getting pulled up by, by Eric Carlson, but he's also not really pulling Eric Carlson down. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I think it's, it's a really good combination where you have a guy who's uh, freewheeling and very creative He's got the passing ability of Joe Thornton, uh, Eric Carlson does, mm-hmm. and you, you pair him with a guy who is, you know, steady on defense. And and Eric Carlson's pretty good with his stick on the in the defensive zone at least, and, and taking pucks away and mm-hmm. angling guys off. But Dylan gives that extra oomph, especially in front of the net. You need that big physical presence in front I of the net. I think that's what Carlson needed on the ice as a partner, as opposed to Vlasic. Right. Yeah. Vlasic and and Carlson are not physical, sure. so they couldn't push those guys out of the crease and 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 box out basically in yeah. front of Jones so I think Dylan helps and I think I think you're right I think Carlson what we've talked about before is he he makes the team better he makes right. his teammates better and he's making Dylan better um, Dylan is no slouch he's not you know he's not terrible with the puck he's he's not stone hands or right. anything right so he has <laughs> a decent amount of skill um, almost I would say he's a top four pairing sure um, he's getting chances and I think what's happening is a lot of teams are focusing in on Carlson, because he likes to take the puck in deep. Like the goal that we saw tonight, mm-hmm. I think for Pavelski, I think he's put it away, right? Or was it tonight, or was it? Uh, it might have been the other game. Um, Carlson had the had the puck on the right boards and passed it back to Dylan up high uh, by the blue line, but in the middle, and he shot it and got a rebound. Fired it in, and it was a tip or a rebound or something. Yeah, and yeah. I think Pavelski buried it. Mm. Um, so I think maybe it was yesterday. Or, um, yeah, I don't think it was tonight. The game. Dallas game, but. Um, Either way, Dylan's got a wide open chance, a wide open look, um, an unblocked shot, yeah. obviously because it got through to the goalie. But Dylan's getting his chances, and he's he's making the most of it. I mean, maybe not goals, but he's he's helping and he's getting on the score sheet with yeah. assists. Now, I mean, a lot of people don't put any stock in the whole plus minus stat, um, which, I mean, I, again, I still kind of do. Don't get me wrong, um, but I mean, for what it's worth, he's got the second best plus minus on the team right now. He's the plus ten. Mm-hmm. Conversely, now we look at, um, you know, you're saying Carlson's bringing Dylan up. If you're just looking at plus minus, Carlson's in the minus. I mean, it's, he's he's not near what Dylan's doing right now. How is he? Apples in the last and week or two. Yeah, sure. Maybe that uh, he dug himself such a big hole in the beginning of the season, and now they're just starting to that, come out. Of and it. That could be it too. In which case, who's bringing who up? <laughs> right. <laughs> who knows? But anyway, um, this is on, he's on pace for a career year. Dylan. Dylan is yeah. for for points. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, that has largely uh, you know a whole lot to do with Eric Carlson being his partner. You'd be a career year if you were playing with oh, Eric Carlson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, regardless, uh, yeah, you know what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's 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 good to see the the big guy out there getting some better chances mm-hmm. and um, you know playing with a guy who's so skilled and can help bring elevate his game you know for him and i'm just i'm happy for him i like bringing up the guys that don't get the spotlight all the time you know i like being able to point out the guys that are maybe not you know always seen as like the offensive weapons out there and everything and it's not fair to look at a guy when he's 
or, or to look at a guy when he's on the ice when a goal against happens and go, oh, Dylan. Yeah. But then when he fires it in and Pavelski puts it in, everyone's like, yeah, Pavelski. And it's like, <laughs> well, wait a minute. You know, he was still on the ice. So yeah. if you're going to, if we're not going to look at advanced stats, then, you know, I mean, if you're not going to look at the fact that he was on the ice for a goal being scored, you're he's just going to look at the he's goal on the score. score sheet because he got an assist. Sure. But yeah. I mean, there are plenty of times where he's out there and he, right. they're generating those shots. At least that's what the advanced stats are saying. Well, but we never thing, look at him and go, oh, cool, Dylan was on the ice, right? So The other thing you got to look at is how many points is he going to put up. I'd say he might get close to 30 sure. by the end of the year. Yeah. That's with no power play time. That's all five on five oh, play. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe some shorthand stuff, but mostly five on five play, which is a 30 points from your defenseman who's getting zero power plays is yeah. uh, is pretty good. <laughs> so I, I think, um, I think yeah, he's probably going to have a career year close to 30 points. Yeah. Uh, maybe a handful of goals, but um, yeah, he's gonna, he looks good. And he's, he's getting his. And is he not also the nicest guy that you've ever met? He is the nicest guy that I've ever met who is a professional hockey player, I guess. I don't know. Oh, but oh, beyond, like, just the current team. You mean, like, ever? I've never met anybody else from any other hockey team, but... I no, mean, I mean, like, of overall the Sharks that you've met in, in the history of the Sharks, he's been the nicest guy? He was definitely... Well, in terms of, like, a player and, and like, hey, can I sign... He, right. He'll always stop. First of all, if anybody out there is a Brendan Dillon fan, okay, <laughs> and you have the opportunity to go to a practice, do not feel like you're bothering him don't feel like uh, there's not a chance that you're going to get, or there's a chance that you're not going to get a signature from him or something like that. He will stop. <laughs> He'll sign everybody. He, he will stop. No problems whatsoever. <laughs> He'll sign people who didn't ask him? Yeah. <laughs> hey, do you want my... Uh, no. <laughs> Just signing kids' heads as they're walking by. Like. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I, I've been there, and every every time I see him, you know, hey, morning, Dilly, he look, he'll look over you, smile, hey, good morning, and then he gets on the ice. Some of these other guys who are, you know, they're, they're too gruff, too good for uh, you, know? Yeah. Uh, Just, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Hey, good morning, yeah. <laughs> you know? But no, he, he stops and says hello. When he gets off the ice, you say, hey, man, you know, good luck tomorrow or whatever the case is. Thanks. And he walks off and you ask him to sign something. He stops. No problem. Every single time. Kids. He loves the kids. Everybody loves the kids, but he'll stop for them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, really great guy. Um, so if, if you're a Brendan Dillon fan and you're you're worried about, you know, maybe he's not as cool as you think he is in real <laughs> life. He's definitely as cool as you think he is in real life. So yeah. anyway. Nice. Yeah. Good stuff. Hmm. But uh, moving on from that, and one more thing actually about uh, Dylan. I'd be curious to see if Carlson doesn't sign next season to compare Dylan's uh, stats, right? That's a good idea. Obviously, it's going to be on the downturn as compared to playing with an elite player like Eric Carlson. Then we'll have to see who he pairs up with next season. Exactly, too. yeah. So I'd be interested in seeing that. In any case, uh, shark stuff aside, one thing we wanted to bring up, and actually it's not even shark stuff aside because there are a lot of fans asking about this and right. saying, we should get let go of Pete DeBoer and pick up Coach Q, Coach Quinville, right? Because uh, he got let go from Chicago. Um, that is no longer the case. It's not a possibility anymore. Yep, he Coach is Q. now hired by the Philadelphia Flyers. Yes, another dumpster fire of a team that <laughs> fired the wrong person, in my opinion. They, they fired their uh, their general manager, Ron yeah. Hextall, who I thought was doing a pretty good job, um, and some internal stuff there uh, on the side. And I don't know how accurate it is, but. Okay. Um, apparently, he, the owner, the the president, I guess, is Bob Clark, who was part of the, um, what do they call it, the the Philadelphia. Don't know. It's the San Jose Shark Show. I'm sure people are are, <laughs> are screaming it on the show right now. The uh, the bolt, the Broad Street Bullies. Okay. Of the of the Flyers in the seventies, the the, um, the Flyers won some cups in the seventies right, because right, right. they basically beat up everybody. Right. They're like the, the Hanson brothers of of <laughs> of the. Uh, the NHL in the 70s. Putting on the foil. <laughs> right. So, um, anyway, he wanted more tough guys. Okay. And Hextall was like, we need more skill guys. And he said, peace. See you later, <laughs> Hextall. So, um, they brought in, I don't even know who they brought in, but then they brought in Kenville. So, uh, he's going to be coaching the team. It'll be interesting to see how they start doing because Philadelphia has a good team. They just can't seem to put it together. Yeah. And I know because I have a few of them on my fantasy team and it's very <laughs> frustrating. But uh, they should be doing better than they are, and I wouldn't be surprised if he turns the team around. Yeah, probably at the, the end of this season. It might be a little bit too late. They might have dug themselves a little bit too much mm -hmm. to get out of. Um, but going into next season, I think they're going to be a, a, a big team in the East uh, with him at the helm. Yeah. So good for Sharks uh, fans to stop asking <laughs> for the Sharks to hire Coach Q. And what we said before is he gets paid by Chicago $6 million a year no yep. matter what if he coaches or not. Uh, actually, if he coaches another team, he loses that. Right. So 
I don't know if they disclose the salary or if they have since they the taping. They must be paying him over six million. Exactly. So you're gonna have to pay him maybe ten million to get off the couch. You yeah. Know, instead of getting six million dollars to sit there for two years. I no, doing well, nothing. Six million per year. For right. Two but years. he had he had this yeah. season and full next season. Yeah. So a year and a half. Twelve million to sit on the couch. I don't know. I'd take the twelve million. <laughs> it's an expensive couch. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. So uh, well, another sort of sharks news thing. Um, because it's it's not the NHL even it's uh, the QMJHL. Yep. Uh, Ivan or Ivan, I guess he wanted to go by Ivan, right? Right. Get From ready our, for it, boys. Get ready. Go back to our Dan Rusinowski oh, okay. episode because yeah. <laughs> because he helped us with the pronunciations of a lot of these guys. Yeah. Uh, and but, I'm still gonna get it wrong, but right. I'm gonna try. Ivan Chekhovich. <laughs> Chekhovich. 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 Ivan uh, is tearing up the QMJHL right now. He's got his fifth hat trick, <laughs> which is just insane. Um, now, and you had brought it up, you know, earlier when we were, we were thinking about putting this on the board. Here was, mm. you know, the kid's 19 years old. He's as old as you can possibly be in the queue, right? right. So, I mean, he should be putting up a crazy amount of points. But however, he was a, I think he was the seventh. I round I think he pick. was the seventh. And and uh, Sasha Shemlevsky, Shemlevsky was the sixth, sixth round yeah. pick. These two guys are doing very well. Chekovich doing better, but um, he's doing very well in and as a seventh round pick. So uh, we kind of looked back at the Dan episode. He said, "Yeah, we might be seeing them next year yeah. or the end of this year. Definitely, they'll be at the Barracuda. Oh, yeah. As soon as uh, the junior league is or their team is done, they're allowed. They're eligible to play for the Barracuda, which is what they did mm -hmm. last season. So uh, for those Barracuda fans or, or Shark fans that want to see them." Uh, the end towards the end of the Barracuda season, they'll be called up and and we'll be, get a good look at them. Which yeah. we'll probably catch some games, maybe. Oh, I'd love to. I yeah. can't wait. I yeah. want to see them. I mean, again, Barracuda games are just a ton of fun anyway. But then right. the uh, the prospect of getting those guys in and and being able to see them play against uh, the guys at the AHL level. I mean, we know he's tearing up the juniors right now. But again, AHL, you're playing against men. Um, you know, big bigger bodies, right. more experienced players. Um, and when they, they came in last season and they, they tore it up too. I mean, they're the reason that the Barracuda even made the playoffs right. last season. They had right? to win so, five of five and they did. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think um, it's great to see them tearing up the queue. And uh, it it's basically put him on the trajectory to be an NHL player mm -hmm. and an effective NHL player, not just a fringe fourth line yeah. player. So uh, they have some skill, they have some scoring skill. It almost looks like another Pavelski type situation. Uh, finding a very yeah. good gem in the rough. In yeah, two of two them good gems in the yeah. same draft. Uh, so props to I don't know if this is Doug Wilson Jr.'s doing. It is right. Two years ago, was he? In? Uh, I don't think he'd taken over at that point, but definitely scouted. Either way, the probably. scouting team doing a really good job with those late round picks. We made the comment earlier that they probably do better with their late round picks than they do with their early round picks. Yes. Yeah. Not, so all. not all. I'm okay but trading those first rounders away if we're going to be getting guys in the sixth and seventh exactly. round. <laughs> I mean, we're getting we're used to having the later round first That's true. picks. Yeah. So uh, depending on how deep drafts are, mm -hmm. you never know. Um, but yeah, finding those those gems in the rough. Yeah, I keep feeling like I'm saying that diamonds, right. diamonds in, the in the rough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's great. It's great for the sharks, and it's great when you can get some serviceable serviceable mm -hmm. NHL action out of anyone past I'd say the third or fourth round. Yeah. Uh, but when you get goal scores that late, that's that's insane. Yeah, that's that's good. So, you good on the sharks. I, I, it shows just how much of a dad I am. When you said diamond in the rough, the first thing I thought of was uh, Aladdin, and that's how that's how I actually know wow. to say diamond in the rough was because of Aladdin. So thank you, Disney. Cool. Um, in any case, uh, <laughs> Shakovich or whatever, um, <laughs> three-time QMJHL Player of the Week. And this last one that he got was a back-to-back. -back. So yeah. in week two, he, he was named Player of the Week. Mm -hmm. And then these last two weeks, I think it was like 12 and 13 or something like that. And he's the first player ever to get, to get two a back -to -back. in a row. Yeah. yeah. So he's he's definitely doing well. Yeah. He's not slowing down. It's great to see. Really good to see from the Sharks prospects. And uh, we're looking forward to having some, some more guys uh, join on the Barracuda and yeah. tear it up there as well. Now, looking forward, we're going to be talking about the games that are coming up. So which games do we have coming up this week uh, Let's see. Tuesday, we're going to be in Minnesota. Right. Minnesota is very good at home. Mm -hmm. I don't think the Sharks do too well in Minnesota. Um, so that'll be an interesting game. I think it'll be a, a, a close game. Mm -hmm. um, Minnesota is also, you know, they fight pretty well for yeah. a playoff spot. So they're, they're like, I'd say, top three in their division. Um, that's going to be the harder game, I think. Actually, home. Yeah. I don't know, Jets, I think. Thursday, home tough. against the Jets will be 
interesting because yeah. that could be a potential i mean not to get too far ahead <laughs> of ourselves here but a potential uh that'd be a western conference finals yeah. game um the jets are one of those teams i had mentioned is the sharks uh have four very dangerous lines it's going to be a very evenly matched game sharks i think have a better puck movers in the back on defense so mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I don't know who else would, other than Nashville is probably the only other team that would be yeah. even close to the Sharks. But um, Hel, Helbyuk, I don't even know how you Hellebuck. say it. Hellebuck. Hellebuck. <laughs> uh, their goalie is is top-notch uh, possible Norris Trophy. Uh, uh, Norris Trophy. Vezina Trophy winning. Aaron's working on four hours of sleep, by the oh, way, just so you guys know. It's been a long, long day. <laughs> uh, and also been sick for the last, like, two weeks. Yeah. Um, anyway... <laughs> Jets are a good team. They're exciting to watch. Yeah. Uh, a lot of goal scores. So I think uh, it'll be two heavyweights. Yeah, Dustin Bifuglian. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Arch nemesis going yeah. back to uh, the Blackhawk days when he helped win a cup and yeah. they got through San Jose that year. Yeah, no, uh, was, big buff. He's uh, You don't want to tangle with that guy. Yeah. I wish the Sharks got him when he was being traded Oh yeah. back in the day from the Blackhawks. <laughs> I thought he would have been great in Teal. Oh, yeah, he'd be great in any color. The right. guy's huge. Yeah, he's enormous. Me? My goodness. Yeah, what, 240, but he's realistically like 300 pounds. <laughs> he's enormous. He's a beast. Yeah. Yeah, force so to be reckoned with. So then after that, uh, two more games. Hopefully, we get the whooping down on LA. I would hate to lose to a team. First of all, I hate to lose to LA. And I hate to lose to a team like LA this season because they're horrible. They're they garbage, are. right? So. Uh, I, I would I'd love to see us just yeah, absolutely put the smack down on that team. Yeah. yeah. And you see who is on IR down there. Who? Kovalchuk. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Their prized possession. <laughs> I remember seeing when he when he signed with LA. I saw some Shark fans a little upset that he wasn't signed by San Jose, but I was very happy yeah. that he was not signed. Um, I didn't think it would be a good fit. I I didn't think it would be a good fit in LA. I was kind of shocked. LA's style is just not high scoring game so bringing in a high scorer like that and then i mean the last week before he was on ir the last week or so he was playing fourth line minutes like eight minutes a game yeah like that's just you're paying this guy six million a year to sit on the bench at the end of the game instead of being out on the ice i it's just it boggles my mind what la is doing yeah well and it looks like they went after him trying to get that goal scoring punch that Mm -hmm. they're missing but again that's just not not their game um, and he, I think he had said, you know, I don't really mind sitting on the bench. I want to, uh, you know, however I can contribute to help the team is how I want to do it. It's I'm like, a, you don't mind because you're getting paid six yeah. minutes to sit on the bench. It's also the recycled cliches that yeah. you know, hockey players throw out there, doing what the team needs, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. <laughs> So sure. after that game, uh, we are still at home, I believe, and it's mm-hmm. against Arizona, the the Desert Dogs, right? And Coyotes, and yeah. A team that shouldn't be taken too lightly. I no, think. they're good. Uh, they they have a yeah. very up and coming young team. Uh, they also just made a trade with uh, Chicago mm-hmm. a week ago, so um, they kind of traded a couple of players that needed a new change of scenery. Change of scenery, yeah. and and they're both doing it. It worked. It worked. Um, the weird thing is on Saturday, the game is at 1 p.m. against oh, L.A. Right, right. And then Sunday is at 5 p.m., so two different normal, uh, uh, different start times than yeah. normal. Um, I don't think historically the Sharks have done well in afternoon games. No. It, it it really messes with the Sharks, or not Sharks, but hockey players are very regimented in their, in their schedule. Um, normally a hockey player, they have a morning skate, then they come home, eat a big lunch, take a nap for a few hours, <laughs> wake up, kind of go back, get ready for the game, and then go and play. And now you're taking away that nap, taking away the morning skate, most likely. And I think it's probably going to be very optional and not a lot of guys are going to do yeah. it. Um, you take away their nap, and now they're now they're going to be playing while they're napping, while they should be doing a nap, right? <laughs> it sounds like you're talking about a toddler, by the way. Right, <laughs> totally. They, NHL players are like toddlers. Okay. <laughs> Awesome. They th- well, they're gonna you're gonna see a lot of tantrums out there yeah. at one PM games. I think we had seen some one PM games earlier in the season and you're absolutely right. The body clock was thrown off and we mm-hmm. just did not play well in those games. They're just, so. They just they don't wake up. They're just yeah. I don't know. They're just their bodies aren't their mind and body are not there. I'm not making excuses. I mean yeah. they're playing the Kings, so hopefully the Kings are in the same boat. Yeah. And yeah, both teams have to go through it, so it's not that big of an excuse. But I, I just feel like historically the Sharks have not done well in afternoon yeah. games. I don't yeah. feel like I'm alone in that 
sentiment. I don't think you are. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, so yeah, a lot of good games coming up. Hopefully, we get some some good wins out of those. I think maybe the Kings and Kings game should be a, a win. We should just call that a win. I'd say the Kings and the yeah. Coyotes both. Okay. I think it's good to get points against division opponents, mm-hmm. and this is a good opportunity for them to put them away. Winnipeg is going to be a tough one. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Wild obviously is also going to be a fairly tough one, but I think the Wild game we, we can get a handle on that one. Although it's going to be in Minnesota, so that's right. that's a bit of a, a tough one too. So there's a possible eight points this week. I'd be yeah. happy with six points yeah. out of the eight. I think that'd be very good. Yeah. And hopefully they come against the teams that they should be getting points against yeah. and not the other way around, which would be odd. But it's hockey. You never Very know. Good, yeah. Something to look forward to. Mm-hmm. So uh, keep that that dog going on uh, on your TV <laughs> there and <laughs> check them out. Uh, also, go ahead and uh, check out the Barracuda games. I believe there's one that's uh, coming up. I think it's a back to back that they're having with. It might be the uh, the five o'clock game or something. I'm not oh. really sure. But uh, there's one of the games they're going to have. That's uh, I think they they have a, a double header. Yeah, double header essentially. Yeah, Sharks and Barracuda. Uh, and uh, and there's a the, what do you call it? The Thornton and McCarthy. Uh, oh yeah, the bobblehead bobble that yeah. they have, right? Yeah. So like Thornton has his beard still uh, and he's, he's Santa, Santa Claus right? and then McCarthy is uh, Rudolph <laughs> yeah. so it's a little demeaning but that's okay <laughs> so anyway um, so last little thing to talk about here the merchandise so we are still doing the whole thing where we're giving away the stickers that have the player signatures on it I went and got signatures from almost everybody on the team there's only like two guys two or three guys I wasn't able to get signatures from and they just generally don't stop is what it comes down to so <laughs> um, Dylan I have Dylan's signature though thank you Dilly uh, so Dilly Dilly anybody who buys a shirt and a hat combination uh, we're going to be throwing one of those signed stickers in at random and um, that's just kind of an extra thank you mm-hmm. uh, especially for the holiday season and everything a little special gift from us to you and that will be expiring obviously on January 1st so if you are interested in getting any of that merchandise I suggest you do it before then so that we can get you a free yeah. sticker and if you're trying to get those before Christmas get those orders in uh, this week that is true as soon as possible that'd be great okay so i think that does it for episode number 28 Mm -hmm. it is no longer timo time oh that's That's it i don't know that's how i'm gonna add add that one (laughs) (laughs) very good okay well thank you very much for tuning in and we will see you guys next week next week (laughs) no hey everyone thanks for checking out the show you can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.